Correctly managing your horse's paddocks can make a big difference to the amount of grazing available for your horses and also help it to withstand the pressures of the horse's movement. Good quality grazing pasture is the healthiest and most natural diet for horses and also has the potential to allow for areas to be closed off for hay and haylage production to provide winter feed. A well kept pasture can provide the most natural and healthy environment for work, rest and play for our equine companions. Horse paddocks generally face a number of demands. They have to provide the diet for 365 days of the year, they have to provide an area for resting and playing and often an area for exercise as well. Oh, the grassland's essential. The livery owners want all year round grazing and it's important to maintain it in condition that uh, will feed their horses properly. Managing grass for horses is totally different to managing grass for agricultural animals. Horse paddocks tend to be small and are often intensively grazed by nothing other than horses. Horses also require very different nutritive supply compared to productive cattle and sheep. These differences can lead to many problems and horse owners may fail to realise that poorly managed pastures supply little or no feed or totally inappropriate grazing. Alongside low productivity, poorly managed fields can be the source of many internal parasites and poisonous plants. Similarly, soil ingestion from molehills or large bare patches can cause colic. It's a very wet farm, so uh, the fields get churned up a little bit in the winter. Um, weeds grow in where the um, horses' hooves have dug out divots, and um, it's important that we maintain it so that uh, it's in reasonable condition. The high rainfalls and prolonged wet weather over the past few winters have resulted in many paddocks now looking like this. Lots of very big bare patches, many of the leaves are very, very yellow. The plants are very stressed because of the compaction in the soil caused by the high volumes of water and often poaching by the horses. The roots can't penetrate down into the soil, which means they can't take up any nutrients which really need to be addressed. The key factors in paddock maintenance are picking up droppings, rotating grazing wherever possible and not grazing grass right down to the ground. Mixed grazing with cattle or sheep can also be very beneficial by reducing worm burdens and not allowing an excess of growth for horses. To renovate a field, first you need to identify the problems. The first thing you should do when you're thinking about your paddock maintenance is actually go out and walk through the field to see what's there. Look for any high areas or low areas, for example, where water might collect. Check for the bare patches. Look for weeds and weed grasses. To assess if a paddock needs renovated, you have to know what species you want in your paddock. If you have between 30 and 50% of undesirable species, the best action is to remove these weeds and replace with the correct species by overseeding. If you have above 50% weed grasses, the chances are that you need to put the plough into the ground and start again because it's beyond repair. The next step is to check your soil structure. One of the problems that's arisen from the very heavy rainfall over the past few years and overgrazing by horses is that the ground has become incredibly compacted. One of the easiest ways to assess this is just to go and take a spade and dig a hole in the field and look and see what problems there are in the soil. We need to look at the top few inches which are very important to grass life cycle. I have two sods here. This first one was before we addressed any of the compaction issues with machinery. You can see how solid the soil is. It's very difficult to push your fingers into it. There's very little root penetration. There's no way water would be able to drain away from here. This one here is completely different. We've addressed it with a sword lifter and you can see it's broken the soil up really, really well. It's much more crumbly water and roots will be able to get down through that much more easily. A basic soil test is inexpensive and will help you to understand the level of nutrients in your soil. The most common problem with horse paddocks is a shortage of lime, not phosphorus or potassium. Calcium lime is very good for grassland as it is required in higher levels than magnesium by the soil. Being able to identify weeds and weed grasses common in the paddocks is very important. The critical weed to be able to identify is ragwort. This is poisonous to horses 
They have daisy-like yellow flowers flowering from May to October. Perennial weeds like ragwort, thistles, nettles and docks should either be dug out or sprayed. The first step in renovating a paddock is to harrow or rake the areas with a spring tine or chain harrows. This can be carried out by a machine or by hand on local areas. When carried out vigorously it removes all the dead material and shallow rooted grasses and weeds in the base of the sward. This opens up the sward letting in air and light allowing clean fresh growth to come from the base of the plant. It also levels out any molehills and will highlight any particularly bad areas of the field. After harrowing you can then go back in and overseed the paddock. It's very important to choose a specialist equine paddock grass seed mixture that has been specifically designed for the job and will generally be hard wearing and not produce overly lush grass. The best time of year to reseed paddocks is usually when the ground is moist and warm enough, from April to September. The most important factor is that the soil temperature is over 8 degrees. This allows the grass seed to germinate and grow without having to compete against other weeds which may be in the soil. By reseeding in these conditions, the plants will develop good root structure so that by the following spring it's ready to spread and grow, thereby increasing the grass cover quickly. After sowing, it's very important to roll the ground. This is to ensure seed soil contact and so help germination. If you get the soil conditions right, you stand a good chance of growing grass. All grass will benefit from feeding with fertilisers. However, do not fertilise at sowing because the new plants have no roots and will be unable to take up nutrients. All you do is favour the existing sward and provide more competition to the new plants. My final bit of advice for paddock owners would be ongoing maintenance. Everybody looks at their horses every day and we should be doing a very similar thing with our paddocks.